All right, today, guys, I'm going to be cleaning up this cross, this crucifix. Um, I had an order. Uh, I just like to put them in with each order. This one's a family order, so I'm just I'm making a few. That way, they can give them away. Can you see that? That's what it looks like after I shape it. It still needs a polish. And this is what it looks like before. I cut all these out of a copper sheet about a year ago. I cut 30 or 40 of them. Uh, maybe even 50, I'm not sure. But I'm just gonna show you guys what I'm doing right now. And then later today, I'll be making a ring I haven't tried to make yet. Uh, this I cast yesterday. I had to clean it up a little bit right here. You can kind of see the file marks. That's just because it was raised and the last shank I hammered out, it uh the the difference between the height of the outside here in the middle, it caused the metal to fold over and it was just a pain to deal with. So this time I'm just gonna get rid of it. And all I have to do to clean these up is, can you see the, there's these little marks, or I had marked to cut, but I cut a half a millimeter away from them, just so I don't run into the line. And all I have to do is file up to that line. And then I'll take this file, I'll just show you. A little tricky using this uh, triangle file because the sides kind of want to dig in. So if you're ever doing this, watch out for that. And these flat files with the smooth sides, well, the edge of the file here will dull down and it'll create a little curve in there instead of a crisp corner. Thing with this kind of work too is using a file on something small like this at first your your line is probably not going to be straight and just keep trying you'll get it that's this is the corner I just did and for the lines you can't see because the lines that are on the back uh, you just kind of flip it and have an idea in your head of how much you need to take off The firmer you hold your file, the straighter your lines will be too. And it's, you got to get used to it with your hands. They're going to hurt at first really bad holding small tools like this. They're going to cramp up. Your joints aren't going to want to bend. But after about a week, you should be able to get through that. If you don't, if you can't get through that stage, uh, you might not want to do this kind of work. the trunk of skin that's how easy it is doing this kind of work to hurt yourself and with this uh, little saw here you get you, I got a little nub on both sides here so I can get the blade in the middle um, if you just if you cut through your material as you want 
but you can't catch the blade in time and your finger is just slightly in this nook here and all you do is touch it like that while it's moving it'll cut half an inch into your finger it does not feel good and of course it's got all this grit polish and dirt so it's not clean be careful is what i'm saying all right um i don't mind if the top and the bottom don't meet that line it just, the sides it does matter but the top and bottom it really doesn't so i'm gonna go ahead and try to make this video quick and just show you guys three sides of finishing and then you'll get the gist you just remember the angle you have this at compared to the angle you're filing and then you'll be good like i said before the first few times you do this it's not going to go well um that's i just know that the camera's turning here so just buck up and keep trying and like things don't have to be perfect this probably looks perfect but it's a slightly different angle from this end to this end Sometimes you gotta turn it as you file too because I don't know if you guys can see that but it's creating a little hip right here on this side. So the bevel is down further on this side than it is on this side. So you just pay attention to what you're doing. If you need to drop the file or raise it or go harder or go softer. And whichever way you're filing, there's going to be a burr that comes off on that side. So just be wary of that. You're going to need to take that burr off. And how you hold your tools is very important. You want to get a relaxed but firm grip you don't want the tool to be shaky you, you want complete control over every aspect of it that's how you get stuff to look decent like this this is all stuff that you you're gonna have to learn just doing it it's not stuff you can just know how to do from hearing it it's experience i think the younger generations have a really hard time understanding that seeing somebody do it and having the tools doesn't make you an expert or even qualified to do it you need to try to do it and have the experience otherwise you're gonna fail that's, that's one of the best ways to learn using the experience is through your failures just don't give up and right now I'm trying on the back to just get rid of those burrs um, you don't have to be fancy with the back of your work but you want it rounded if it's this is a keychain, but if it's going to be sitting on somebody's neck, you know what I mean? You don't want this to be sharp or the corners. And you can get the corners down with just some sandpaper. I'll usually just give a quick one-two on the edges before I hit the sandpaper. Anyway, guys, that's how I do it. Um, I'll pause it here, finish these. And then I'll get my stuff set up to drill the hole. And um, I have videos on soldering. You guys don't need to see me solder the jump ring. So, but I will record how I get that hole in there. And we'll wrap it up after that. All right, I got my drill bit put in here. And all I'm going to do is take the pendant right here. Take a little pointy thing, and I'm just going to mark where I'm going to drill, so that way my drill bit doesn't want to shatter all over, trying to find a hole. And one thing with drill bits, um, if you pay a lot of money for them, like these were 30 bucks for a set of eight, I think, make sure you lubricate them, because you just, you don't want to have to buy these every week. And this lubrication is just called Burr Life. I pretty much get all my stuff from Rio Grande, but I think I'm going to stop doing that because they just, the way they operate their silver sales is it's not.
Okay, as I was saying before my video cut out there, the uh, Rio Grande Silver sales, they're just, they don't, it's not right what they do to the customers. For this. So I buy all my silver for them. And when the spot on silver drops, they might drop their silver price a dollar. It dropped to fourteen dollars, and they I didn't see a, a change in their in their price for it at all. Maybe like two dollars. So then spot rises, and they just shoot it way up there. But they have customers that only buy silver from them, and they want to charge them prices like that. It's just ridiculous. Like if you're somebody who doesn't buy silver from them repeatedly. I understand if they want to charge you a little more, but for people that only go through them and buy, you know, 100, 200 more value amounts, they should be more honorable to those customers. I gotta pick this skin off. I'm gonna change this drill bit out. I don't like the size, it's a little too big. Uh, apparently, my phone can only record a 10 minute video. Maybe it's the settings I have it on, I'm not sure. When you're doing this, hold your piece sideways. Don't hold your uh, flex shaft like this. If you got a Dremel, it doesn't matter. But this shaft right here, if it's bent at an angle right here and you run it, it it's, has a high risk of snapping in here somewhere. If you hold it like this in a U shape, I don't know if you guys can see that, where the U is in the middle, you'll get the most amount of torque. And when you're drilling like this, you absolutely have to have a very good grip on your PC. It's not good if you don't. Just keep oiling. The more you oil, the faster you'll punch through. Um, I think the oiling also cools the drill bit which is nice because then your hands don't get burned but there is what it looks like with the hole drilled in it uh i used to do this with an egg beater drill just it, you have a handle like this and it's got another uh gear on it that has a handle and you turn it and then it turns a chuck and you just throw a drill bit in that and put your piece up against something like this where it's not going to want to spin and you're good. But uh, I'm not going to show this on film. Hammering out this just because it's too much. I have to wear hearing protection. I'm working with a heavy hammer. I don't want my phone really near me at that time. And it's, I can't imagine you guys would enjoy watching me just beat up a piece of silver. But I will take pictures possibly. And um, I might do a video once I get it hammered out what I'm doing with it. So we'll let you guys know well, when I get started on it. All right. Have a great day. God bless.